Hi, welcome everybody. We're so excited to have you today here uh, with us. I'm so founder of Exverso, and we're so excited about two amazing speakers uh, today from our Exverso community. We are here to showcase our first NFT drop with amazing artist and curator Cesar Lopez from Kansas City, as well as Janine Yance, founder of M-Train. Um, we're going to talk a lot about identity, art, soccer, and technology, and how everything fits together. And it's going to be a, such an exciting drop. And um, before we get started on the panel, I just wanted to remind everybody, the auction will be for seven days. And on our platform, you never have to be a crypto expert. Uh, you don't need any crypto wallet or cryptocurrency. Just register, and you can um, bid with your credit card. And then also, this time we have a big surprise for everybody. The winners of this NFT will also get a surprise airdrop coming up. It's a secret, as well as VIP access to our future events. And with that, I'm going to kick off our panel. And I would like to welcome Janine and Caesar uh, to Exverso. So we're so excited to have you today, and uh, we're so thrilled. And uh, people have been asking about you and your background. So Caesar, would you? Would you uh, mind introducing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thank you everybody for coming. My name is Caesar. I am an artist and curator here in Kansas City. Uh, today we'll be talking about some of the works that followed, some of the flag paintings and explorations of maps and globes and this specific uh, drop of NFTs, which includes soccer players and flags and these environments. And we're so excited to have you here with us. And we're going to talk more in depth about your work and the amazing colors you have chosen and the history of the flags, because this is something that is very, very fascinating to all of us. And then um, Janine, um, thank you so much for being here with us. This is such an honor. And could you please introduce yourself as well to our audience? Yes, and thank you for having me. So, so excited to be here and so excited to be here for, for Caesar too. So everyone, I'm Janine Yancey. I'm the founder and CEO of M-Train. We're a culture tech uh, platform for um, mid to enterprise companies. Um, and we're, our purpose is really to educate and analyze and, and bring people together in the workforce. So we're all about respect and inclusion, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I, I love having a conversation about um, really changing, changing hearts and changing minds. And Janine, you have such an interesting history. There are so many things that you have worked on and we wanna explore that further in this panel today. Uh, hopefully we're, we're gonna stay in our 30 minute uh, timeline, but there's so many things that are so exciting about our speakers today that we wanna explore. Uh, but just to kick it off, um, Caesar, we have been so fascinated with your work. Uh, we, have, we had a lot of conversations about working with flags and you know, it was so fascinating to me because I haven't seen a lot of artists working with actual flags and creating flags and creating colors and shapes. And this was so fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit more about your art practice and what motivated you to create art, artworks from flags? Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for your question. So uh, myself, I moved to America at a really young age. And part of my relationship with flags uh, comes from being uh, from Guatemala. One of my jobs as a really young, young uh, student was to be the caretaker of flags. It was my job to put it away safely and to raise it uh, during the assemblies. And I think my relationship with flags uh, sort of stemmed into my interest into other countries and the colors that they utilize. So for example, when you look at the work, you'll see lots of colors. And a lot of that is exploration of looking into what these colors mean and what countries utilize certain colors in their flags. Uh, for myself, it's such a great way to look at something or somebody's colors, or whether it's a jersey or a flag or really any other way, and just recognize that someone uses those things to, to display where they're from and that they're really happy to share that with the rest of us. And you were talking, this is so fascinating, and you were talking about a lot about when I read about your interviews and I'm, I'm seeing your videos on YouTube and other channels about your shows. And by the way, a big show is coming up as well in Chicago, but we're going to talk about this also in a bit. But um, it, you, you talk a lot about what you call the third space. Can you highlight to us what you mean by that? What is the third space and what, 
what are you trying to convey with the third space? Yeah, absolutely. So what I mean by that, and a lot of other artists investigate that idea in different ways, but I'm specifically thinking about the, so there's this first space, which would be where I'm from, the second one, which is the current state in America, but then there's a third one, which we have to carve out for ourselves, a space of inclusion, a space of safety, and a space which uh, is more than just a country, it's more than just where you're from. So that third space is a, a, a way of describing how to carve out a space for yourself. Now, it's not a, a literal space like a country, but it's this idea that we can belong in a separate place where we have our own flags, where we have our own customs that are a mixture of where we're from and where we're going. So that's, that's the exciting idea of the third space, that it could, it could be for everybody and anybody with, uh, with whatever you've got. That's so amazing. And then that actually gets me to Janine, because Janine, you're talking about the third space as well in your work, right? And can you tell us a little bit more about your practice and, and how you create spaces for, for your customers, for your employees? And we would love to hear more about that. Yeah. And so just to riff a little bit off of what Cedar just said. So that third space, if I hear, if I'm hearing you right, so that's what is uniquely yourself. Is that, is that a good way of understanding that? That's right. That's right. And there's, uh, there's so many different ways because it's specific to every person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love that. So, um, you know, I kind of fell into my niche, if you will, as, you know, started off as a labor and employment lawyer helping out businesses and, and trying to solve problems and, and got into the trenches of employee relations and saw that when there was friction, it was often because people, there was no human element. The social dynamics were just not there to support really positive acceptance and inclusion. Um, and that, that really kind of led me to think about, wow, could we create, you know, at a macro scale, uh, media and stories and, and ways to get people to see each other as human beings and accept each other as human beings, um, see that how they think about something might be very different than how another person thinks about it. Because I think as the human condition is, we all think that our perspective is the perspective that everyone shares. And so create a safe space to open that up and see though, oh, actually we're just all on a continuum and we all have very different perspectives, um, but do it in a way that we can connect and just kind of bolster that social fabric, if you will. Um, and, and, and then seeing over time, and we are seeing this with, with our, our clients and we see this actually here, within our own team too, that once you really strengthen that social connection, you allow people to, to be appreciative and, and curious about other human beings, that's like the foundation for, for having productive interactions, right? You, you stop othering people, you stop with the fear um, and, and you just open up and, and you start to really accept people. So um, that's really kind of maybe a, a bird's eye view of, of my journey. And it's an amazing journey and an amazing cause. And can I play the devil's advocate here, Janine? Yes. So why do you think diversity is important? Is that, does it have a direct input impact on productivity? Does it have an impact on general set, job satisfaction? What have you seen in your practice? What's the benefit of diversity? Yeah. So, and I would, I would say there, there's diversity and then there's, then there's inclusion, right? And so those are two separate things. Um, so diversity is just, just a body count, right? Do, do you see different types of people reflected um, in one space? And um, inclusion is, do you see them connecting with each other and actually being part of the same team, right? And so we have done a lot of research uh, and people can, it's interesting. Um, we've partnered with, with some academic institutions as well with our research and combine our, our um, data with their data. It's all on our website at uh, mtrain.com for people to look at. And the research shows that when you are able to move the inclusion score, if you will, so as the score is as related by the people in the organization and what they think in real time, about certain behaviors that, that they experience, 
as you move that score to a, you know, up and to the right to a healthy, a healthy place, you do have higher performing teams. You have people that will stay with each other longer, that won't turn out, you know, will not like leave the team. They're, they're happy to be working with each other and then they are more productive. So, uh, and then obviously, um, you know, kind of a natural um, byproduct of this is, is less friction, less, less conflict. Uh, this is this is very very interesting. Thank you so much for summarizing that for us. And I think that also gets the two of you together again because in, in your vision and mission, you both are very much aligned. Can you also see the talk a little bit of, about the inclusion factor of your work and and how it actually kind of relates to your flags and borders and non borders and and other areas of your art practice. That's right, yeah. So likewise, I think that that's something that I'm considering in the work. Uh, so the flags, right, there are these symbols which includes group of people and they, they become to represent a, a large portion of them. But at the same time, what a flag will also do is uh, exclude somebody simultaneously. So what I sought to think about is like, well, what if I interact with flags in a way in which I'm producing many, many flags that could just be taken up by so many groups of people or at least the desire for that comes from having interactions where I wasn't part of certain groups, especially as an immigrant in America. And so for that very reason is where, where the draw comes from to be able to create more flags so that to, to sort of reconcile this feeling. So I think it's really important to consider that a flag as a symbol of belonging can, uh, they, that we can continue to generate more and more of them. And this is also your exploration because you started off as a uh, as a sculpturist, as a as a traditional artist, and now you ventured into the NFT space. And we love your NFT drop; it's so much fun. But can you elaborate a little bit about it and 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 the work and why you have considered you know moving from the traditional room because you have also a VFA from the Kansas Institute of Arts and uh, you have a traditional art background. And why did you choose to go into the digital realm? Yeah, well, so for the for the very same reasons the, about the third space, I think that a digital space is a new place or a new space really that can allow someone to create a world in there, which for different technology, um, I guess, institutions or different technology things are headed that way because it's so open. And I would I think it's important to to head in that direction by creating digital works because. Um, the conversation around the resources isn't the same, like anyone could make them. And I think that that's really wonderful that it, there could be so much room for all of us. And that's where my interest really lies. I think finding ways in which we could produce works that are inclusive and that are available to lots of people. So I think that that's, that's why it's important for me. Mm, that sounds really interesting. And Janine, what is interesting for you to be in this space? Uh, and can you can you give us some some highlights from your perspectives? Oh, I love what what Caesar's doing to me, and we we talked about this before. Um, you know, so to actually move a culture or move you know how people think about certain things, you have to connect emotionally, right? And so art connects with people, I think, emotionally. And when you get that emotional connection you literally open up people's, you know, ability to, to think about things in a different way. Um, you know, I was just thinking about this, like art reflects what's going on right now, but it also, you know, kind of moves what's going on and, 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 and influences what's going on right now. And I think we've seen that through history. And so to have artists like Caesar start to, not only reflect the current state, but to imagine, you know, the state to come and move us all there, I think is beautiful. And, and I'm gonna do a total kind of digression. So, so excuse me, but, you know, I think we've all just seen, uh, I was, at least for me, I was just, you know, watching Serena Williams and I'm old enough to remember when, so she's not art, but, you know, She's culture, right? And I, I'm old enough to remember where like, she introduced a new concept of what a female tennis player looks like, acts like. And, and over the last two decades, she's, cha she's changed how all of us think about 
female tennis. And, and so bringing that back to art and in society, art can change society. Absolutely, that's so well said. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, your background, Cesar. You know, you, you highlighted to me in our conversation, you highlighted a lot about your background from Guatemala and specifically how you wanna integrate Guatemala and actually your, your, your background and history and culture into your works. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about your country as well as the integration into your current country and, and your space that you're creating for your own kind of vision? Um, how does it all interplay? Yeah, so in some of the works, what you're going to see is some soccer players, and they're sort of moving across these landscapes full of flags and colors. And those are specifically connected to memories from, from back home. So uh, when I was really young, soccer, and it is in most parts of the world, soccer is a really big part of the culture. Uh, as I recall from our conversations earlier, I, I thought at that moment when I was really young that the soccer players were the heroes that you look up to and you see the best of humanity and the worst of humanity. You see people triumph and come together to overcome this, this or to, you know, to come together for a goal, a common goal. But you also see people be upset and sort of like cheat sometimes. But the deal is that all those things were really formative for me because soccer was such a big part of the culture and, and like a full encompassing uh, whether it's the colors, whether it's the jerseys, whether it's the people you look up to. So those are the parts that I think are, are the most relevant and that you can see in the works. You can see all of these, all these characters, right? Uh, and yes, and um, is there any specific reason the, the choice of characters that you have taken? Because it's, it is a, it is a, it's a very kind of statues kind of presentation it could kind of looks a little bit like greek statues can you can you tell us a little bit more about it yeah you know i think that what's what's really wonderful about that is the the way in which the characters are presented is i wanted and sought to look for something that would have some of that too a little bit of references to art so something that would exist in both worlds which is what what the third space is about finding finding something that touches on both backgrounds in such a way to exist in between the worlds. And you have very, very strong color choices. And this was something that I immediately saw and it's actually quite happy. And why did you, what, you know, the colors that you've chosen, do they have like any symbolic meaning to you? Is it, is it just your favorite colors or is it something more than that? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, of course. So what you're seeing in some of these pieces, specifically the ones that use the red, white, and blue. So, the color palettes come from investigating and looking at uh, flags and the, the color palette of them specifically. But in the red, white, and blue ones, there's a specific story and name that the American soccer team carries all around the world. And it's a very special one because for me, Guatemala has never been in the World Cup. So we always felt like we had to support something else. But during our time here in America, it, it only makes sense that we would support the U.S. So the U.S.'s nickname all across the world is uh, what they call El Equipo de Todos, which means the everybody team. Oh. And this is a really wonderful story that, uh, that pretty much says, like, if you've come to America, uh, we have taken you, I mean, in the story, right? We've taken you and then we're, you're now a part of this, at least in soccer terms, right? Because you want to support a team. Yeah. And so for that very reason, what you see in the works is the red, white, and blue draped all across, sometimes across the players, or even very punchy, full backgrounds that encompass the characters and the heroes in there. And at its, like I said before, at its best, it's a narrative about being welcomed in America and, and that there are all these great heroes that we see ourselves in. And that's really what I think about when I see the red, white, and blue. Mm, interesting. This is so this is so well said. And um, yeah, and tell us a little bit more. You have a big show coming up. Uh, I know you're very, very busy. Uh, it's been very difficult to get you on hold. Uh, tell us yeah. about your shows, your fairs, your your Chicago debut. Can you can you highlight that? And for everybody from Chicago, we have people here from Chicago. Uh, please go and see his show. Um, so tell us more about that. Yeah, that's right. So I will be in Chicago during the second week. So the show is at Manic Contemporary. We're actually part of a, uh, an, an art fair 
it's called Midway Art Fair. So there'll be a bunch of booths, but my, you'll find my work uh, there as well. And I'm excited to meet lots of people and to make some connections. I think that it's going to be really wonderful to get to go to another city and meet lots of wonderful artists. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. So Mana Contemporary in uh, Chicago, please go and visit uh, Caesar show. It's coming up in two weeks. And um, so um, actually, it's, we're getting close to the end of the conversation. Um, but I want to I wanted to wrap it up with I could really continue with talking with you guys and probably offline, we're gonna talk a lot about, about more about our experiences and how our section uh, are get together. But um, generally in the future or in the current moment, where do you see the interconnection between platforms like Exverso, M-Train, artists like Caesar? Um, where could you see how we could all merge together into right now and also in the future? And maybe this is a question for you, Janine. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that I think that is where we're going. I mean, we don't. First of all, technology underpins everything that almost everything that we do these days, right? So to have uh, you know a technical platform to to scale something just seems like that's just natural. And so to bring art, like what Caesar is doing to the world, you know, you need, you need scale, you need a technical platform to bring what we're doing at M-Train in terms of, um, you know, developing respect and inclusion skills, you know, at scale through all the different global workforces. You know, it, it's just a natural intersection, I think, for me, it's the intersectionality of, of a technical platform, technology platform to, to bring something to the masses, art to open up people's minds, moving culture. I mean, it's all starts to be overlapping and integrative. I think this is just, this is what we will continue to see moving forward. So for me, it's a natural. And Cesar, where do you see the direction going? Thank you so much, Anine. This is amazing. Right. I think similarly, uh, we're gonna start to see, and I think that there are already large trends where uh, even the art that I interact with is mostly online before I get to go on a trip like the Chicago trip coming up. So there's a lot of uh, ways of sharing things online. And I think it would only become more and more natural to share works like this that are already, that are native digital works. And I think that that's becoming more and more important so that you can continue to share these things on a global scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so thank you so much. So actually, if we don't have any other questions from the audience, uh, do we have any questions from the audience right now? Okay, it seems, doesn't seem like it, but uh, otherwise we will also, we would be happy to address any questions that you might have uh, offline. And uh, obviously Janine and Cesar are our community members. They're all also on our mobile app. You can uh, interact with them if you want to and ask questions as well. And so we want to wrap up our uh, live panel today. So thank you so much for being here with us. We are so, so excited. This is the first time also that we have paired an amazing artist and a, and a Silicon Valley unicorn founder. So we're super, super excited about this. And continue bidding uh, on Xverso or start the bid if you haven't started yet and get these amazing works from Caesar. And we're so excited to have you with us. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. This was very fun. Yeah, thank you again.